Hi everybody, today we're talking all about cells, okay? So there were some scientists years and years ago that each had their own conclusions about what cells were. So together they came up with the cell theory. The cell theory states that all living things are made up of cells. And these cells are the basic units of life, okay? So I wanna push pause right here and discuss something very quickly with you all. I do not want you to confuse cells with atoms. In a previous unit, you learned that all matter is made up of atoms, and atoms were the basic units of all matter. Okay, this is very different. We're talking about living or once living things. Okay, all living or once living things are made up of cells. Now, inside cells and atoms, they both have a nucleus, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. But I really want you to differentiate cells with living things and atoms with matter, okay? So cells are the basic units of structure and function in an organelle, or in an organism, and new cells are produced from existing cells, okay? Okay. So the modern cell theory tells us that the cell contains hereditary information, hereditary meaning DNA, meaning your genetic material, and that's passed on from cell to cell during cell division. All cells are basically the same in chemical composition and metabolic activities. Every cell in my body is going to have my DNA in it. Every cell in your body is gonna have your DNA in it, okay? So they're gonna be the same in that regard. Every cell um, has a job to do, and the cell activity depends on the jobs or the activities of its subcellular structures, okay? Subcell. Remember, sub would mean under or smaller. So the subcellular structures within the cell, meaning its organelles, its nucleus, its plasma membrane, all of these tiny, tiny, tiny things are found within a tiny cell. And the organelles, the nucleus, the plasma membrane, they all have activities. They all have jobs to do, and they help the cell perform a bigger job. Okay. Let's start by looking at prokaryotic cells. Now, the prefix pro means before. So before there were other cells, there were prokaryotic cells. These are very simple cells. They do not have a nucleus. So the DNA, or that genetic information, floats around the, the cell like a bowl full of spaghetti, okay? It is not nicely contained within a nucleus. It's all floating around. And it has very simple organelles, okay? So for example, bacteria. Bacteria would be a prokaryotic cell. Let's talk more about prokaryotic cells. They are the simplest type of cell, okay? They're the oldest type of cell. Remember I said that pro means before. So before there were complex cells with a nucleus, there were prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotes are the largest group of organisms, meaning there are so many prokaryotes. There's so many types of cells that are prokaryotes that don't have a nucleus, okay? Um, bacteria being the largest group. Now, prokaryotes are unicellular organisms. Unicellular, prefix una means one. So prokaryotes, are one cell big. That's as big as they are. They're not like you and me that have billions of billions of cells that make up our body. No, they are one cell big. That's it, okay? Prokaryotes do not have a nuclear membrane, okay? So their um, circular shape, genetic material is dispersed throughout the cytoplasm. Remember I said it's kind of floating around like that, okay? They don't have a nuclear membrane or um, a nucleus to keep it all nice and tight in a little ball, okay? Prokaryotes do not have membrane-bound organelles. Again, they're floating around within the cell. Prokaryotes have simple internal structure, not complicated, not complex at all. Prokaryotes are smaller in size when we compare them to the other cell type of eukaryotes.
Okay, let's look at eukaryotes. Eukaryotic cells are much more complex organized cells. Look at the inside of this cell. There's so much going on in here. They possess a true nucleus right here that's going to be in the center. And they also have other organelles as well. Okay, the cells in you are eukaryotic. Okay, you are not made of one cell. You're multiple cellular. You have a whole bunch of cells in you and they are all eukaryotic cells. They all have your genetic information in them along with other organelles that help the cell do its jobs. So characteristics of eukaryotic cells. Well, we came after the prokaryotic cells. So they're about 1 billion years old. Um, eukaryotic are generally more advanced than prokaryotic. Yeah, generally more advanced. Uh, nuclear membranes surround the DNA. Okay, I just showed you that over here. Nuclear membrane is surrounding the DNA. Okay, unlike prokaryotes, eukaryotes have several different parts. We have a whole bunch of organelles that, that perform its jobs. Prokaryote organelles have coverings known as membranes. Eukaryotes have a complex um, internal structure. Eukaryotes are much larger in size. Now, this is a really good side-by-side -side of prokaryotes, eukaryotes, and the things that they have in common. Remember I gave you the example of bacteria being a prokaryote? Remember that prokaryotes appeared first, and they have a circular DNA that kind of floats around the middle here in the cytoplasm. They lack, all the organelles lack a membrane, and there is no nucleus, okay? Here's another example. That genetic information is floating all around. They do have organelles, but they lack membrane and they're much more simple. Let's look over here at eukaryotes. The eukaryotes are plant cells, human cells, um, animal cells. Humans are animals. We're just glorified animals, okay? Um, they've got linear DNA. They're multicellular uh, mostly. Uh, organelles have a membrane and they do have a nucleus. And this model, uh, here's the nucleus here, okay? The nucleus would be over here in this one. Um, they both can be unicellular. Prokaryotes are always unicellular. There are some eukaryotes though that are also unicellular. They both have a cell membrane that go around the entire cell, okay? Uh, what makes this different the mem membrane wise is that eukaryotes also have a membrane around their individual organelles inside the cell. They both have ribosomes, they both have a cytoplasm. Okay, so now when we look at eukaryotes, we can look at two specific types of eukaryotic cells. So we're not talking about prokaryotic cells at all. Both of these cells are eukaryotic. We've got a cross-section of like looking inside an animal cell and we have the cross-section looking inside a plant cell. And here are some of the differences that you'll see. In the animal cell, you'll see lysosomes. Okay, you will not see that in the same way in um, a plant cell. Okay, now in the plant cell, you will see a cell wall that surrounds the cell membrane. That's that green line. You'll see that in the animal cell, they also have a cell membrane but the animal cells do not have the additional structure of a cell wall like the plant cells have. In the plant cell, you'll also see chloroplasts, okay? This is what gives it its nice green color, okay? Chloroplasts are here. And then additionally, in both the animal cell and the plant cell, you will find vacuoles, okay? But you'll notice in the animal cell that there's many small vacuoles, whereas the plant cell has one big, large, central vacuole, okay? And this is what's going to store the water for the cell um, and keep it, keep the organism, the plant upright. Um, when this vacuole gets very empty and without water, you'll notice that the plant starts to shrivel up, okay? This is different than what it looks like in an animal. All right, and that's all that you'll need to know for this lesson. Reach out if you have any questions. I know that there's a lot of information to cover here. Remember the differences between prokaryote and eukaryote. And then once you know that, take the eukaryote and learn the differences between animal and plant.